hi and welcome back to my channel and if you're new hi and welcome to my channel i just <coughs> just lost my voice so i often feel like that comes into the reading somehow but it might not who knows um yeah anyway um what i usually do if you aren't used to these readings is um i like to sorry excuse me <laughs> i like to jump into what's going on in the skies at the moment and try and do as quick a synopsis as I can and then jump into the cards for the month ahead. Now, a couple of things. Half the month's gone already. Um, so we're looking at the second half of the month and because of that, I'm going to also be looking into part of January as well for you guys um, because I've left it so long. I, um, yeah, I, I, apart from not being well organised, I was also um, uh, a bit sick for a bit, so I couldn't really push myself to do anything faster than what I wanted. I, I wanted to get these out a lot faster, but yeah, it, it just wasn't going to happen. Um, so I really apologise for that. But yeah, um, <coughs> we'll get ahead anyway um, and see see what comes through. So. Just quickly, um, we know that Venus came and went. She's out of her retrograde completely. No, no post shadows left. Whatever. Um, Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune are now um, in their post shadow. Chiron's going to station direct on the twenty seventh. Jupiter's going to station direct on the thirty first, and we're not going to get Uranus stationing direct until January, late January, on the twenty seventh of January, twenty twenty four. Now, oh, yeah, okay. Now, also, we've got Mercury in retrograde now. I think that he, yeah, yeah, by the time I have this up, he's going to be actually in retrograde. And he's retrograding in Sag. Um, and I'm doing this on New Moon, which is um, New Moon in a Focus, because I do topocentric true sidereal, which uses the visible sky, which means when you look through a telescope, it will it takes into account the actual size of each constellation because they're not blocked up in neat 30 degree sections they're different sizes some are tiny some are huge you know um and so for instance um virgo and pisces constellations are massive um yeah so so the new moon is in a focus and i also want to say that a lot of the time the mainstream will say a focus is made up. It's not. The scientific community actually acknowledge that a focus is a constellation and therefore it's another sign, you know. Um, so in topocentric true sidereal, because some, some sidereal astrologers still don't use a focus anyway, but topocentric true sidereal does. And so, yeah, the new, new moon is in a focus and really all you need to do is just make a note of what sort of themes came up were we looking into different types of healing different needs of healing and that sort of thing because the focus is the second half of scorpio that's where we always find a focus you know there's your scorpio half of scorpio the second half of scorpio is a focus you've got scorpio then a focus then such um so yeah so where a focus will have some Scorpio themes, it's not as deep and intense as Scorpio. It's more about deep healing, where we've got um, the Virgo sixth house themes of the healer being of service to others, health and healing and all that. Um, the focus is where we find how we need to heal, um, as in what we need to heal, what modalities we might use, look into to use to heal, you know, that sort of thing. So these these sorts of scorpionic and a focus themes are going to come up because this is the focus new moon okay so what else did i uh, and also um i want to mention the eclipses from october um because then we're not out of the window of them yet um because like the retrogrades there's a pre-shadow then there's the eclipse event then then there's a post-shadow we're in the post shadow of both of those eclipses from October. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So that's where you feel the energies 
like pre-shadows where you feel the energy is leading up and usually the shadow areas uh, whether it's retrogrades or eclipses the shadow times are actually more intense than the event itself a lot of the time even the retrogrades you know um, so yeah because I can attest to this retrograde, in fact, because that's why I was a bit unwell, because of this, this particular retrograde has kind of thrown me for a loop and brought back some things I thought I'd already dealt with that clearly the universe was saying, well, actually, you know, that thing you thought you dealt with? No, you didn't. Um, yeah, so it sort of um, stressed me out a bit and I got a bit unwell. Yeah, so anyway, things like that can happen when you're not sort of doing the work. And I know I sort of say it myself and sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't always know that you need to do that work until it slams you in the face and you go, oh, wow, I thought I was over this. And no, because something triggers and then you go, wow, OK, I'm not over this after all. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, what else were we up to? Oh, yeah, those of you who... Um, who do watch these will know that I've been for a couple of months at least I've been promising about trying trying my hand at doing a Jupiter retrograde video like I did with the Venus one a few months back um, I did I did get it done um, and what I did I didn't just do Jupiter but I added Mercury retrograde as well because they're um, kind of amalgamated like the uh, Mercury retrograde his whole retrograde phase, pre-shadow, the retrograde and post-shadow is going to happen within the full phase of um, Jupiter retrograde because Jupiter's not going to be out of his post-shadow before Mercury is out of his post-shadow, if that makes sense. Um, because Mercury's going to see... Um, Ju Jupiter's going to station direct on the 31st, right? Mercury's stationing direct, I'm pretty sure, on the 1st of January 2024, like a day or two after. I think it's, a, I think it's the following day. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the 1st. But anyway, the difference is with Mercury being such a fast-moving planet, he actually has about three weeks of a post-shadow now, Jupiter's going to have around about two, maybe even two and a half months of a post-shadow because he's a slower mover. So that's why I say, uh, and so anyway, so I decided to put them together, not just for the sake of, of Mercury happens to be happening in between the time of Jupiter retrograde, but Mercury's retrograding in Sag, and Sag has the ruling planet being Jupiter. So there's that Sag-Jupiter ninth house themes with both, both Mercury retrograde and Jupiter um, retrograde, even though Jupiter's retrograding in Aries. Um, yeah, so so um, what I've done is covered both of them, both of the planets, and it's not a card reading one. It's, it's like the Venus video where I show all the different charts and explain everything throughout. Um, and I also jump into every single rising sign to let you guys have an idea of what sort of things might crop up, what sort of ways to work through it and that sort of thing as well, along with uh, plenty of other information. Um, so it's going to be found on my community tab because I didn't want to lose it in between all these card readings on my main part of the channel so yes yeah, so you'll find that on my community tab and i recommend looking into it because it's going to you're going to find some information that'll be helpful for sure now when you see it it's going to be a very long video it's actually to date my longest video but don't get sort of freaked out by that because i have a plethora of timestamps for starters um, and you, you won't need to watch all of it because clearly you're not going to need to watch every single sign anyway. And the bulk of it is going through every single separate rising sign and all the different things that Mercury retrograde and Jupiter retrograde may bring up and how to work through it. So there's a lot of um, con information condensed together. And so, yeah, just jump onto the timestamps that interest you and obviously you don't have to watch the whole thing, so don't be freaked out by how long it is. Um, I didn't realise it would be as long as it did end up being, but, yeah, so... Um, but I feel that there's quite a lot of good information you guys can make use of from it. So, yeah, you'll find that on my community tab. Plenty of timestamps, don't freak out. 
Um, <laughs> and don't, don't look at this, the, the length and go, oh my God, I'm not going to sit down for that. Um, but yeah, just jump into the description box and there's all the timestamps you need and all the things that you'll be interested in. And, and yeah, just tap away at the timestamps and you'll be fine. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I needed to mention. I don't know how long I was, but yeah, it was quite a while. Um, yeah, so let's jump into your cards now for what I said was um, it's going to be for the second half now of um, December and moving into January as well. So we're probably going to cover a bit of January. So we have 12th house. We're opening with 12th house and that's in Capricorn for you. Um career and ambition um, in the okay Pisces themes covered by the sign of Capricorn being career and ambition maybe your career might have something to do with art or music maybe you could put some sort of music or art in with your career in some way anyway Uranus like I said, he's not turning um, stationing direct until late January, and then we've got a whole, whole um, another time frame of post shadow after that, February, March, and so on. Um, but again, don't fear the retrogrades; they're not here to punish us. They're here for us to work with their energies to improve our life. And this is Uranus break free, and Uranus is your ruling planet. You know, it's shaking things up. You know, not sticking with the status quo. Um, first quarter moon. Okay, first quarter moon. Hmm, okay, good. Because right now, as as I speak, I'm filming this on the Afuka's new moon. So there was obviously a reason I, I wasn't well until now to be able to film it. So, you know, there I think that there's some sort of healing energy coming through here as well that needed to come in for the last three signs. Now, first quarter moon, clearly on the left you're seeing the new moon representation and on the right the full moon. So we're talking, it's just after the new moon and the first quarter is literally halfway between both of them, right? So this is, and since the new moon hits and then two weeks later the full moon hits, halfway between is one week, so a week after the new moon. So... Since the new moon's right now, the 13th, we're talking about the 20th. Um, well, it depends on where you're from. It might be the 19th, um, 19th or 20th anyway, depending on where you're located. But this also, the phase is right smack in the middle of a new and full moon. This first quarter, it's actually a square. It's, it's known as a square. And it's about, um, and there's a last, last or third quarter square, which is the one after the full moon. But you're looking at the new moon one, which is reiterating. <clears throat> it's challenging you because that's what they are. Squares are challenges. It's challenge, challenging you to think about where you might have hopes, wishes, dreams that you've, you wanted to bring in from the new moon energy, but maybe you've fallen off the wagon a bit about it and you need to sort of refocus and challenge yourself to get back on, back on the program, back with the, back on track with your wishes, dreams um, and all that, uh, goals, ideals. Um, yeah. Mars, now Mars is the only planet not retrograde or in any shadow this year whatsoever. He's not going to be retrograde until the second half of 2024. So he's completely in full motion as well as Venus right now. So he's here to help you, even with retrograde Uranus, to move towards whatever this is. So, so far the signs we have is Cap in the 12th Pisces themes. Uh, okay, now we've got Gemini, communication. <clears throat> As I say that, I cough. Okay, so there might be need for communication. Now that's the fifth, whoa. That's the fifth house, which is about creativity. And what did I say about music and art and your work? Ooh. 
Let's see what else is coming through. I'm getting excited. Aries. Mars rules Aries. Mars is the ruling planet of Aries. Aries is where... Oh, oh. Aries is your third house. <gasps> no way. See, this is the communication sign, right? Okay. And that is in the fifth, communicating creativity. This is in the third house, which is the communication house. And that is Aries, which is the first port of call, the, the, the fiery go at, you know, I need to be seen right now, regardless of anything else sort of thing. The Mars ruled Aries. And that's right smack in the middle as well of the communication in the fifth. So you're needing to communicate your talents, your art, your um, music, because it's going to do something with your career. Hmm. Okay. Lilith. Oh. <laughs> I'm always happy to see Lilith. Oh, yes. Now, Lilith takes no prisoners. She takes no crap. And neither should you. I'm going to put her right there because I think I can squeeze her in there. But, yeah, she, she's an asteroid. Um, yeah, she's a very powerful goddess asteroid. Yeah. So I, I want to say that um, she's wanting to bring that power to you to not be afraid to jump into this creativity and this, whether it's music, art, drawing, writing, um, singing, dancing, whatever it is, it's going to help your career in some way. Whether you have it as a career or do it in part for your career, it's going to boost it. That's what I want to say. Um, waxing Crescent Moon. Now, okay, I did squeeze her in here, but I think I'm going to move her across here um, to your 12th. Because when I find that there's more um, cards, I want to do it this way. Wait, it's this way. Because see, that's the first crescent, right? It's waxing, it's moving towards the full moon, right? So it's still new moon. That's still new moon too. It's halfway through. But yeah, I think um, Lilith wants to let you know it's it's time. Yeah, I think that's why also I had to squeeze them in like that because Lilith wants to be here to reiterate that. Now we've got another one. Waxing Gibbous. Okay. Well, she's still nearby. I always like to sort of get things in order when I see the moon cards like that. See how we're moving towards the full moon now? It's closer towards the full moon. See, three-day window just after the new moon. Then we've got the square in the middle. And then we've got a three-day window where there's still new moon energy. So still you don't have a full moon. See what I mean? It's all still new moon energy wanting to bring in the new and Lilith is now under Uranus, and Uranus wanting to break free. Lilith is saying, go for it. Tenth house, career and ambition. What have we got in the twelfth house? <laughs> career and ambition, Capricorn. What's under your tenth? Scorpio. Ooh, deep and intense like Lilith. Ooh. And we're talking about a focus bit having the Scorpio theme, see? Deep intensity. But with a focus, it's not as painfully intense like Scorpio can be at times. It's more of the healing, the looking deeply into what sort of things would be healing, what will heal us, what, what will make things better for us, what, what will we find easier in our lives to move forward with once we heal ourselves from any difficulty not picking up difficulty yet but i'm what i'm feeling is any difficulty that you did have because i think this wants to bring you forward and there's really something to do with your your career 
and I think if there's some way that you can maneuver whatever your talent is whatever your creativity is I think that's why we've sort of had had things moving around as well that we started out with these sort of in between each other sort of thing and now it's sort of creativity smack under there you know that's communication sorry well, Aries fire sign communicating your art Lilith wants to support that communicating your art jumping into it going all all for it 100 percent what's this guy Aquarius see this is your rising sign no wonder it's smack in the middle Yeah, see, because, I mean, when you have career and ambition, what are we known for in our career? Boom. Your rising sign. How do people know you? Your career is going to... You're going to be known for something, guys, if you step into this and get out of the fear. Lilith is not afraid. <laughs> never. She's never afraid. She wants to give you that fearless powerful energy to just strive forward and go right i'm gonna do my art music writing uh dancing singing whatever it is it's going to have some sort of improvement on your work it's going to be some sort of addition or you can do it as as a job as a as a career i don't want to say job because it's a, you know working for the man blah 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 i mean not man as in you know what i mean but yeah, I, I, as a, either as a career, this is really exciting me, as a career or as a bonus to your career, it's going, yeah, this is all new moon energy. This is all new wanting to come in, break free, break up the status quo. This is your ruling planet. And what have we got? Smack in the middle is your rising sign. This is important, guys. Oh, we got another moon one. Waning gibbous. Now, we have a full moon that's going to be in... Je <sighs> Plus, there's so much moving around with the moving parts to this reading at the moment. This one goes here, guys, because clearly it heads to the full moon, then the full moon happens, then this is a three-day window again after the full moon. And this is then asking you to um, release any negativity of it, probably. Or, either that, or it's making making the adjustments, tweaks, changes that are needed to move forward. Because the full moon isn't always about releasing upsets and what, anything or anyone that's hurt us. Yes, that's great and all, and is often useful and is often the case. But... Um, it can also be about making tweaks and changes to certain things that you do or things that happen or, or, or ways or, or um, daily duties sort of thing, for instance, you know, change, changing things up a bit, changing things up, you know. And so there's that three-day window. And remember, we've got three cards with new moon energy, so we're still not hitting with the heavy energies. And this isn't the full full moon. It's three days after it reiterating there might be some things you have to maneuver in, into place now the full moon is going to be in um, top eccentric true sidereal gemini which again is communication so there's going to be a measure of communication to iron things out or get things processed or sorted out so that then you can move forward with all this but you need to jump into Maybe this is about working out what exactly you want to do, whether it's bring something into your career or make a career of whatever this, um, see, fifth, this is, we've got fifth house now, see, this fifth house creativity, art, beauty, um, music, like I said, dancing, singing, um, playing musical instruments, writing, drawing, painting, Whatever it is, either you're going to have the opportunity to get yourself 
in a prime position. And I say that because we're moving into a new year. You want to get in a prime position. Start the new year going, I know where I'm going. I know what I want to do. I know what I can, you know, make a career from that I'm going to love. That's the point. It's not something that you, like I said, like I was sort of, when I said, Ugh, job, you know, Ugh, working for working for the, you know, system. No. This is something that's going to bring you joy. This is something that's going to bring you satisfaction. This is something that is going to empower you like Lilith wants you to be. This is something that you've got in you that you can process that you can that you can um show the world that you that you can share with the world you know and there's so many ways we can do that sort of thing now that there's so much online to access you know you don't need 10,000 years of, of of study or or a stack of money to start up a business or, or whatever you don't need all that anymore you know and like I said, you've got the three full moon, uh, sorry, three new moon energies bringing in the new Uranus right there starting it all rolling. So I think this is more about just making any tweaks and changes. Get yourself sorted out. Maybe it might have to do with communicating with others so that it all works in your favor and theirs if there's someone else in the career uh, as well that, you know, ironing out the creases, whatever, and, and making it you are going to see a future with this you, you're going to once you step into these energies and start working it all out you're going to go I can see this happening for me I can see this in my future I can see how this is going to work this is going to be great it's going to be amazing and it's going to okay what else have we got Saturn well Saturn's in his post shadow and he's not always easy to work with but sometimes he's good in terms of giving structure and stability and taking things slow not screaming ahead because you might be afraid of, of screaming too fast ahead take your time um but at the same time don't go too slow because you've got all this energy now and it's a really powerful healing energy and i feel like it's got a lot to do with it like the healing is part of you knowing your worth enough to know that you have something to offer the world whether that's in the career you're in already and it's an addition to it but you have a talent that other people need to see and they will appreciate it do not be a shrinking violet i think it's called do not shrink back do not hide yourself lilith doesn't hide herself She's just there in all the glory. She doesn't care who sees. She's, she's, yeah, she's just like, she doesn't give a damn who thinks what. She couldn't care less. What she's in, interested in is empowerment. You need empowerment. This is healing your sense of empowerment and self-worth. And I think this is where Saturn comes in too, to give you that stability that you didn't have before because the self-worth was not strong. And now it needs to be. Absolutely. Lilith says so. <laughs> I want to say Lilith says so, guys. But yeah, I wow. I'm just these these energies, guys. Seriously. Tap into them. There's something that you need to bring into the world that's going to help you as well. It's going to be healing for you. And, and you're just going to find so much more joy in life because of it, because you opened up to it and allowed it to start being a part of whatever you're doing already. Ninth house, seeking. See? Seek better for yourself. What's that there? Oh, it's just, yeah. Seek better for yourself because it wants to come in. Ninth house is Sag themes. Uh, ninth house is in Libra. The, the sign of the balancer, the sign of relationships, not necessarily romantic. All sorts of relationships and by what I'm guessing so far, it's business relationships. 
I think I did tap on the idea that there may be others involved and you can communicate with them. And from what I'm seeing so far, the communication is going to be really easy going. Do not fear it. Tenth house, reputation, oh my God. See? And that's smack in the middle next to Lilith and your rising sign. You, you've got this in the bag, guys. You have nothing to fear. Lilith's right there saying, pow, let's go through this together. I'm with you. The Aries, break through those fears. We don't need them anymore. Look what's available to you. It's already within you. 11th house, the edge. Go to the edge. Be dare to go to the edge. 11th house, Aquarian themes. That's in Sag. See, see we've got the Sag house. Now we've got the Sag sign in the 11th. See how it's all connecting together? Oh, I'm so excited for you guys. Virgo, the alchemist. Yes. Alchemize this because you have it in the bag, guys. What, what you're all, you're, you're already doing something. But you're not seeing its worth, is what I'm feeling. You are already doing some sort of creativity and beauty, art, talent, um, in whatever form that is. You're already doing it, and it is a commodity you are not making use of, or you have not yet made use of. You need to do that now. You do have enough talent. And Saturn is saying, jump in and do it. Because Saturn's about, all about, about career and ambition. So Saturn rules 10th house in Capricorn, right? Capricorn's here, 10th house is here, 10th house is here. So we've got it four times. Need I say more? Freedom seeking, Sag, 9th house, right? Sag themes, and, and then uh, Sag was in the 11th, wasn't it? Yeah. Virgo, what did Virgo cover again? Virgo is the 8th house. Scorpio themes, which funny enough, Scorpionic Lilith and the Ephucus New Moon. Yeah, I really feel that this Ephucus New Moon is, is going to like just throw a lot of healing on you and go, do this. It's going to really freaking heal you something chronic, something crazy. Jump into it. This is your energy built for you. I want to say, okay, so we've got some of these cards and they may have reversals. Let's see what they've got. Retrograde. Well, that makes sense because we've got retrogrades going. Review. Well, it's in reverse. So I think what's going on here, even though, yes, it could be re reiterating the retrogrades, but it could be doing that upright either you know, at the same time. But since it's in reverse, I feel that you already have this. There's nothing to review. Jump in and do it. It's yours for the taking. It's here. It's in front of you. It's screaming at you. It's staring you in the face saying, this is worth a lot. Do something with it now. Aquarius collaborate. Yeah. See, well, you're Aquarius rising, for starters, right? Collaborate, which you haven't been doing. Sorry. <laughs> that's why it's in reverse. And I think that's where I've picked up that um, communication thing. Collaborate with who you need to collaborate with. Do not be afraid. I'm turning this around now because I expect that you guys are going to jump into this energy and not fear it. You've got nothing to fear. These energies are wanting you to work with them. Because this is the whole point with the retrogrades. They are here to help us manoeuvre ourselves to a better quality of life. That's the whole point. When we work out how to work with the energies, it makes such a big difference in our lives. It really does. I'm keeping that upright because I really believe you guys can jump into this energy if you get out of your fears, you've got nothing to fear. Don't allow the fears to hold you back anymore. Um, cancer, immerse. Yeah, don't hold back anymore. Immerse in these energies. They want to work with you. They want to work for you. Sorry, I'm moving every 
anything around. And that's upright, remember? Um, Cancer for you is in sixth house. There we've got the Virgo themes again. Virgo themed house covered by the sign of Cancer, Cancerian, the home family. Home family. It could be whatever you're doing feels like home or it's it's with people that feel like family or are family even. Either way, it's upright. I didn't have to turn that one. It was already upright. This is the one I turned because I know you can collaborate. Do not fear it. It can work in your favour. It Not only can it work in your favour, it will it's screaming out. Lilith is here. She's saying, do not fear anything. I'm by your side. I'm holding your hand. We can do this. Fifth house, passion. Again, you have not let your passion out. Fifth house, Gemini, communicate it. Let it out. Boom. Let that passion out. Let it flow. You see, there's this see how there's the easel there like i was talking about the art your talent is 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 getting wasted you're not doing anything with it i think you feel that it's not good enough get out of that because that's a virgo trait of, of the self-depreciation let me tell you because i've got a lot of virgo in my chart i depreciate myself quite often um doesn't mean it's the right thing to do so i mean i can i can you know, I, I need to take my own advice. But yeah, stop depreciating yourself. I've turned that around as well because I feel you can. You can turn this cycle around. And this is going to be life-changing, guys. And you want to be able to do this moving out of 23 into 24. Because I think this is where the energies are manoeuvring. You may be in 2024 still doing it. That's a three-day window. So what are we talking about? Because that's after the full moon, which I think is around the 27th. So that's right smack on the end of the month. So the 30th, 31st, right when Jupiter turns station direct. Again, see how they, there's all those um, synchronicities? Yeah. So make your tweaks and changes before it stations direct. And if you can't, then just do it while while Jupiter's um, in a, in his post shadow. But the main thing here is jump into these energies before the full moon hits. Because I mean, you've got every single phase here of the new moon except the actual new moon itself, which I think is reiterated by the Uranus um, planet right there. Anyway, strength. Wow, dignified. It's upright. If it was this way, but it's upright. It's telling you, boom. Self-worth, empowerment, dignity. You can do this. You need to do this. People need to hear and see your art. Hear, I say, because it might be music. Read it if it's if it's if it's um some sort of written work or poem or book or something like that. Read, hear, sing, whether it's singing, dancing, seeing, people need to see this. It is good enough. That's the problem that a lot of us think that we have to have everything just perfect. I mean, I wouldn't be doing these readings if I thought I had to make everything just perfect because clearly these aren't perfect, but I'm still doing it. I'm making an effort. I've got this platform. Maybe it's a platform you need to start. Look into that. Be open to it. This is what the retrogrades are showing you. What is available to you that you can jump into and grab with both hands, you know, and run with it. Stop selling yourself short, guys. Come on. You have creativity that people need to see. Dignified. You, it's going to be a dignified experience. You're going to shine. And you're going to probably wonder why you didn't do it earlier. But don't kick yourself about that. Just see the fruits of your labour once you start doing this. You'll be like, oh, I'm so glad I finally jumped into this. 
whatever it is for you. Okay, so what is your numerology for December and January? I'm just saying December and January. I'm, I will do, a, I will still be doing a um, January reading for the month of January and hopefully I'll get it out way earlier. I've been doing a couple of these a bit too late lately. I'm not happy about it, especially with you last few signs. You always cop the, you know, <laughs> the later times and that's not fair. So anyway, what is the numerology for the Aquarius Rises? What do they need to know for December and January? Well, they just concertine it out. Is there any other cards for the Aquarius Rises for December and January? I don't think they're... In. Okay, that, yep. Aquarius Rises. Okay. <laughs> December and January. Okay, this one's peeking out too. Wow, you got a few after. I had a feeling that a few were going to come out. Now I'd have to see if they're all lined up together. Some might be upside down and there's no reversals. So let's just see. Are they all upright? Yes. Okay. These, this deck doesn't have reversals. So anyway, what have we got? Intuition. Follow your intuition. And Lilith's going to guide you as well anyway. You're not alone. Intuition. And that's um, your sacral chakra, creativity. One, two on its own is um, relation, the relationship number. And it can be relationship with yourself. But it could be relationship with work colleagues, family colleagues, because we've got the family sign there. Um, did we get fourth house with anything? No, no, I don't think we've got fourth house. It's just 10th and 12th. It's mostly, yep, yeah, but we've got the family sign there. So there could be family involved in some way as well. But in any case, it's not bad energy. It's really, really good energy. And you need to jump on this because you have a talent you're hiding. No more. Uh, so anyway, two is a relationship number. We've got a double, which is um, a master number. And two, two and two is four, which is the number of the builder. You can build whatever this is. You can build it very strong. It needs to be in the world, guys. Whatever it is that you've got locked away, unlock it. It needs to be in the world. End of story. No correspondence entered into it. Bring it into the world. And only the way you can because it's needed by you it's needed by you see we've got the rising sign twice here and saturn's supporting you as well because saturn's giving you that stability see so you don't have to feel like everything's going to pot so to speak because saturn's going to help you with the stability of it lilith's going to help you with the self-empowerment and getting away from the fear so that you can forge ahead with that Aries energy and just jump into it. And we're talking about Aries energy. We've got the root chakra, red color, and the heart chakra. Self-discipline. Yes, it's going to take some discipline, but you can do it. See, that Saturn's supporting you with that side of things, discipline, as well as being able to just forge ahead and not care about other people's, you know, Because I think it's about, this Lilith isn't so much about other people's opinions. It's what you perceive other, other people's opinions would be if you were to do X, Y, Z. Don't, don't um, do self-fulfilling prophecies. Get out of your head with that. Because all these energies are screaming that people are going to really admire and appreciate whatever this is that you will be bringing through do not fear it for the number of the builder again one is personal power and emotional vitality and together they come to a five which is freedom free yourself from being locked up so to speak you've locked yourself away for too long You've locked your creativity away for too long and perhaps because you've been way too harsh on yourself about 
whether it's good enough. It is damn well good enough. Let yourself out of the noose. Take the noose off because you don't need it anymore. Stop the self-depreciation. Stop, stop critiquing your work, your creativity so far that you no longer are happy with it. Stop doing that. Enjoy what you do and know that it is good enough and you are good enough. Teaching and learning. See, you can be in a position like that with whatever you're bringing through. Maybe you're going to teach people how to paint or how to sing or how to play a musical instrument, which they otherwise wouldn't know, you know, um, without your expertise, without your spin on it. A billion people can do the same thing, but every single one of them is going to have their own spin on it. And some people will go to them, some people will go to someone else, some people will go to you. You don't need 10 million people to come to you, you know. None of them do, if that makes sense. The people who want to come to you will come to you. People will come to you because they like the way you present things, the way you explain it, the way you show it. Don't be afraid of that. Purple is um, a money cure in um, feng shui. It's um, also a regal colour. And here we've got the heart chakra again, one of the heart chakra colours. We've got freedom again. And seven is the mind and creativity. Five and seven is three. And here we've got communication. Youth, action, activity and communication. I have a feeling when I was saying about the teaching and learning as well, I have a feeling that whatever you do, if you're showing it in a teaching and learning capacity, that your way of teaching and learning is going to help so many that they're going to appreciate your way of doing it because you are going to make it seem far easier. You're going to be, um, you're going to be a good teacher. You're going to be um, compassionate. You're going to be understanding. Not everyone is. There can be teachers that are really quite stern and methodical too much, you know, but Saturn's just giving you that balance. That's what Saturn's doing here. It's not a negative, oh, my God, it's just taking me over and it's not going to be good. No, this, is, this, this one here is telling me that it's just a matter of getting you in balance and Lilith's giving you that um, personal power and emotional vitality. See? Right on Lilith. See, right on Lilith. I love how it all works out. You've got another master number. Compassion. What was I talking about? You have that compassion. You exude that comp compassion that people desperately need. And they will flock to you. They will go to you because they see that in you when you shine, when you allow yourself to do this. This is going to be healing for you and others. You know, here we've got the purple regal colour again, the feng shui cure completely, which is also a cure for money. There might have been a money issue. There's no Taurus or um, second house. No, Pisces didn't come through, but the Pisces house did. So, yeah, there's no money self-worth thing going on here. But I think that in to, it, it will bring you self-worth because we've got Lilith here that's saying that's enough. You have to have self-worth. That's it. We're not we're not dealing with this anymore. We're not dealing with the self-depreciation anymore. It's not going to be part of the lexicon. Okay, so you've got compassion. 99 is a, a um, master number. Big beginnings, big endings and spirituality. And uh, again, spirituality doesn't necessarily have to be anything to do with religion whatsoever. Spirituality can be a philosophy you believe in. It can be something you do. You can climb the side of a freaking mountain and be spiritual in that sense. That can be where you find spirituality. It doesn't have to be a secular um, sort of thing or, or a um, 
organized religion, you know. Um, yeah, so big beginnings and big endings. I want to re reiterate the um, eclipse energies because they're still lingering around. Like I said, minimum of three months, but it can be three to six months. And I was hit with a four month one. So, you know, there you go. Um, and that and the eclipses were in October. So, yeah, we're definitely still in the window. How many more have we got? I've got a few more. Um, leadership. Ah, <gasps> come on. Root chakra again. Your self-worth. You can do this. You can take the lead. You can lead in this. Whatever this is, it's going to heal you and others. And there's the other color to the, the heart chakra. See, the green was there and now the pink. Eight, money and stability. We had one, emotional vitality and personal power, remember? Eight and one is nine. We've got nine big beginnings, big endings and spirituality. Like I said again, it doesn't have to be organized religion. Sorry, but... <laughs> I know I sound like I'm bagging it out, but I'm not religious, so I guess... It might come across that way. But, yeah. Die. Take the lead. This is what it's, it's, it's telling you. This is what Saturn is wanting to support you with as well. Take the lead because you can do it. And not only can you do it, but you can do it damn well. And people want to see that in you. Stop hiding. Stop hiding your talents and creativity. Patience. Yeah, be patient with yourself, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, be patient with yourself. And this is the creativity, the sacral chakra. Two again, relationship number, which I feel in this particular sense with this card is relationship with yourself. Dignified strength, I want to put it here. Bam. Rising sign, how the world sees you. Do not give yourself false self-fulfilling prophecies. Do not be concerned about what people might think. Jump into these energies, knowing you're not going to be alone with it, knowing it's going to it, it's going to expand. It's, it's going to be a really wonderful thing. It's going to have a knock-on effect. It's going to be like a... I don't know if it's Ouroboros where it's going to be healing for, it's going to continue the circle. It's going to be healing for you and others. Bring your creativity, your talents, your, your art, your beauty, whatever it is, into the career you already have or make a career of it. One of the two. And someone else co communicating with you that, either is family or feels like family is going to be helping you in some way too. You can rely that they will help you in some way to bring that out as well. It might be the very, very change that was needed to, to freshen things up, I want to say, even. I think, I think yeah, I think it's something like that too, that, that something needed to be refreshed and you have the answer. You've been sitting on it, quietly doing nothing about it. Um, I've recently heard a saying, what is it? You've been sleeping on yourself, not taking notice of these powerful energies that you have within you. Whatever you're doing, you are, you're already doing it. It's You don't need to learn, study, do whatever the hell else. You've already got what you need. You're already doing it, uh, probably as a hobby. I don't know how much of a hobby if you're self-depreciating, by the way, because you're really over-critiquing, I feel. Stop doing that, seriously. Jump in, even though you feel that it's not perfect. Jump in and see, dare to see what other people's reactions are, and you are going to be shocked at how good the reactions are going to be how much people are going to like whatever it is that you are doing whatever art form that is whether it's musical instrument singing dancing acting even uh writing 
a book, writing poetry, um, what else, playing an instrument, I think I said that, um, painting, drawing, whatever it is, something needs to come into the world through you and only in a way that only you can bring it in. You're needed, guys. You're needed. Jump into this. What a way to end the year and start the new year. Bam! This energy is saying, work with us. This is your right. This, this is your destiny. This is your North Node. Jump into it. I know we didn't get North Node, but jump into it. Yeah. Pride. <gasps> See, again, we've got the purple again, the money money cure and then we've got the um root chakra again the self-worth idea emotional vitality and personal power we got the one a few times now and look the nine again big beginnings big ends and spirituality as well big beginnings big endings with the eclipses that want you to work with them their energies change things up break that concrete break that fear and jump in and do it. It's going to change your life in the most amazing way. And see, this still comes to a one, which is emotional vitality and personal power. By being patient with yourself and your art, in whatever form that is, taking the lead and letting the world see it without giving yourself self-fulfilling prophecies of what people might think which they won't, they'll be thinking, wow, this is fantastic. Why did you not show us earlier? You know, why have you kept this all this time from everyone? Show the world what you have to offer, guys, because it's it's really potent and powerful. It's, I, I can feel the energy. There's, stop sleeping on yourself. Bring it into the world. The world needs to see it and the world wants to see it. That's the point. It's good enough. Do not self-depreciate. I can say that because I've got a lot of Virgo, remember? Don't step into that negative energy. There's negatives and positives to every sign. But yeah, you, you get what I mean. Okay, so what is your abundance messages for December and January? I'm saying both, even though I'm going to do a January reading anyway, earlier. But... um. Earlier than this was what I meant. But, um, yeah, I'm going to cover both anyway, like the start of first half, maybe of January, whatever, as well as the end of December, since we've only got half a month left. Till the end of the year. Wow. Okay, so what abundance messages for the Aquarius rises? What do they need to know about abundance for themselves? What's their abundance messages? Let's see. They're being specific. Okay. It's a bit. Okay. Another abundance message, please. Yeah, you want, you want me to keep going? Okay. All right. Yep. <laughs> oh my. That's what, really? Yep. Is there any others? More. Anything else for the Aquarius rises? Wow, really, really. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're going to have to get through those. I don't know how long we've been. Uh, yeah, when I get the feeling that I'm needing to go further, I, yeah, I have to keep going. So, what did we get? Damn, there's a quite a few. Okay, so these were the first couple that, oh, damn. Yeah, we've got quite a few here. I had a feeling, yeah, see, that's why I kept going, because I had a feeling there was something more to this rather than one or two cards. I think this is going to be a long reading. <laughs> I don't know how long I've been. Um, one of abundance's many corollaries is that the brighter your light shines, the more you attract everything moths and butterflies at which point you begin learning what to celebrate and what to let fly on by or whom flame on the universe right well i wasn't getting so much of the libra 
um, relationship um, number. So I'm not sure it's so much whom, but maybe what, like your negative self-talk, see? I think it's got a lot to do with that. Let the negative self-talk fly on by. Yeah, it's it, that's what it is. Something wonderful is happening for you right now from me, the universe. End of story. Drop the mic. There it is. Have you got the point yet, Aquarius Rises? I'm not trying to be, um, what's the word for it, patronising. I'm just trying to sort of, I don't know, that's my funny way. But, yeah, I'm saying it because I know you're getting the point. It's not a matter of whether or not you can afford it, swing it or handle it. It's a question of whether or not I can and I can, the universe. By the way, the universe is talking directly to you. That's how these are set up. See, well, the set up as if the universe is talking directly to you. So that's why it's saying it that way. Okay, I'm going to have to slide this across a bit more. Wait a second, because there's more of them. I knew there'd be, I had a feeling there'd be more of them because they just sort of seemed like you guys needed them at this point, the reassurance. When you look around you at those in the world who flourish, thrive, laugh and love, those whose lives are filled with friendships, adventure and abundance, aren't they, more often than not, first and foremost, the dreamers? Whoa, coincidence, or did you just luck out? Wink, wink, the universe, the dreamers. See, you have a dream that needs to come to reality. You can do this. It isn't a pipe dream. You don't have, the only Pisces energy is the 12th house. The, the Pisces sign itself didn't even come through. Neptune didn't come through. It's not like, this isn't an illusion, guys. This is real. This is something tangible that you can jump into and make a career of, do something with for the rest of your life. Not having enough money is never the problem, it seems. First, lack is always temporary. There you go. Second, change is only ever a few thoughts away. And third, it's not like you haven't performed miracles before. Honey, honey, the universe. See, you can perform miracles. Everyone can. You are no less or different than anyone else. You can perform this miracle. It is not out of your reach. It is not something you need to fear. Lilith is telling you, no fear. Jump in. She's right there next to your rising sign in the 10th house. Plan the celebration now. Yes, sweep the floor, clean the slate, pick a date. Window shop, buy a few things, go out on a limb. Rearrange the furniture, pick some flowers, take some time off. No, no, not necessarily because the tipping point has been reached but because this is how you reach it. How's today looking? The universe. Um, I want to jump into here because I don't want to hide Lilith. So I think she's got an important part to play in your December and January especially, but onwards as well. Oh, look, there's a rainbow on this. You can dance with the illusions of time and space, choosing your steps based upon things and events as they now are, or you can dance with your dreams, choosing your steps based upon things and events as they will be. And I bet you can guess which steps will perpetuate today's illusions and which ones will change everything, shall we, the universe? And this is where fly on by, where is it? This one, the first one. Don't let, don't let the illusions of now 
be your story. Let them fly on by. And dance with your dreams. Wow, this is really powerful energy, guys. This is absolutely beautiful. I so hope you jump into this. If it was just about surviving, getting by and keeping things the way they are, then how would you explain your wild imagination? If it was just about sacrifice, selflessness and altruism, then how would you explain your burning desires? And if it was just about thinking, reflection and spiritual stuff, then how would you explain the physical world? Get the picture? Want it all? That's what it's there for. Vroom, vroom, the universe. Exactly. And look, you've got a camel there who can take you a long way. So this is telling me as well, camels, camels aren't in for the short trip and then they go home and take a drink. They're there for the long haul, for days on end, weeks on end, and so forth, months or whatever. Whatever you need, the camel is there to provide you with that support. See what I mean? Everything is in your favour, guys. Do not fear. Jump into the energies. Show your talents and your worth because it is. Oh, I said worth. I meant to say work. Your talents, your work, your um, art. Because it is worth it. And this is how you're going to feel, you know. On a beautiful island... And you'll have your mojito or whatever because you'll go, I jumped into this energy and this is my lifestyle now. How wonderful is that? I mean, seriously, guys. You want what you want because you know it's possible. If it wasn't, you wouldn't. This is powerful. Embrace it for whatever else you believe or don't believe. This belief alone can take you the distance. Here we go. And what you want wants you, the universe. What you want wants you. Bam. I'm going to I'm going to pop it onto here. Actually, what you want wants you. I want it near the middle. Okay, let's see what the guardian angels want you to know and then we'll close up. I'm sorry if this has been going a long while, but clearly I needed to do a long one for you guys. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> Okay, so what do the guardian angels want you guys to know about in December and part of January as well? Yep, I've already got the oh, I'm going to have to chase that down. You want to come out, I know you do. Uh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, we'll just run through again to see if there's no more. Okay, is there any others? Rachel. <laughs> okay. Anything else for the Aquarius Rises from the Guardian Angels for December and part of January? Oh, you almost wanted to come out. Okay, I think that's it. Yep. Not yet. Okay. Alrighty, what did we get here? And you know why I'm laughing? If it's not fuzzy, you can read it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I covered Virgo after all. Um, we, your angels, ask you to please be more compassionate towards yourself. Observe the times when you have critical thoughts about you and your work. Um, and make an effort to replace these negative thoughts with positive loving ones. You are a wondrous being of light. Even if at times you think you are less than perfect, remember that God and divine perfection exist in all things. Jewel. Funny, this one came directly after it. 
Every event in life presents us with a new opportunity to experience ever greater love. There is a jewel to be found within every teardrop. <clears throat> yeah, communication. My throat's going again. <clears throat> um, trust. We, your angels, are guiding the current events. This, you see, you're getting guidance. You're not alone. Um, this is a time in which you and those close to you, family or who, though, who feels like family, will emerge strengthened by ever greater bonds of love. Trust there is nothing to fear. There is only love. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have? <laughs> Surrender. Remain positive about the future of our planet. For all is part of humanity's evolution. There is a divine order to all the chaos which you perceive in our world. Nothing will ever truly change until we learn to love and accept all as it is. Lovingly surrender your judgments and expectations. Remember, judgments and expectations is a Virgo thing. Um, and your life will magically transform. Yeah, surrender the judgment and expectations of yourself. Maybe others, but I think this is particularly about yourself and your life will magically transform. That's what it's saying. Eternity. Gently move your awareness from the external world to a world of light within your heart. Allow each breath to heal you as you drift to a place beyond time. Eternity exists within you, forever sparkling like a diamond, you are, in essence, a shining star. Did I say something about that? Maybe. Um, forever transforming to ever greater light. Shining star to ever greater light. Leadership. You can be that star. Do not fear it. You are good enough. You can do it. People can listen to you if you are open to allowing it to happen. Open it up. Saturn is giving you the support and the stability and the structure. Lilith is giving you the let's go, let's do this, let's not listen to our inner naysayer anymore. He or she can go jump. That's Lilith saying, get rid of the fear, let's jump, let's do, grab my hand, let's run with this and run forward. You can do this, you have everything you need, you are good enough, your work, whatever that is, is good enough. It is. It's more than good enough. Your talent, your art, your beauty, whatever it is. The beauty of art, your, the beauty of... Yeah, the art-beauty thing is mixing together. There's beauty in whatever art you're doing. Yeah, that's it. And you need to see that. Stop sleeping on yourself because here it is. It wants to come through. Okay, so on that note, I'm going to get, wish you all the best of luck with this for December and January and onwards. You can get yourself set up in the most amazing way and either have a career with your art or the career you already have is going to be boosted by your art in some way. Either way, it's going to be really good for you and you're going to have that that island paradise um, vacation experience because you're going to feel a lot more freer. We had freedom, didn't we? I'm pretty sure we had number five come out somewhere in some way. You did. You got freedom somehow at least once. So on that note, I'm going to wish you all the best of luck. You are going to be free once you jump into these energies and work with them absolutely beautiful let me know what it is that you guys are starting up you know how, how it's um playing out in your life i'm really excited for you i want to know what what it is okay so on that note again i wish you all the best of luck for december and january and until next time bye for now